Okay, so to, today's uh, lecture is going to be on on I, basic ideas behind measurement. Uh, so this is a departure from electronics, which you have gotten some exposure to, uh, mainly pertaining to instrumentation electronics. So we'll just do a brief recap to understand where we are right now in the course and uh, what we are trying to learn in the next couple of uh, couple of weeks after which you will put everything together and actually conduct an ex experiment where you verify or validate a hypothesis okay so where are we uh, what we have done so far is uh, is that we have learned the structure of modern day instrumentation electronics okay so that's what that's what we have learned so far so the structure of uh, a modern day instrumentation system consists of a sensor which gives you an analog input typically need not always be analog but uh, often times it's an analog input that we will call u of t which is then processed using a set of electronic components so you typically have an adc to convert the analog information into digital information which is then sampled typically using a computational device like a microcontroller after which signal processing or data processing is done on the microcontroller possibly in real time that information is later on utilized in a variety of means one way is to is if you want to see stuff on an oscilloscope you can reconstruct the signal and uh, the process signal and verify if your processing makes sense etc or if you want to store the information that is coming out of a microcontroller put it out through uh, some communication device like a serial port or something and store it in your computer okay so the what we have learned so far is this structure so you have an analog signal adc processing through a microcontroller and then whatever you want to do with it okay so for for you to so this is this structure it spans across the entire gamut of instrumentation electronics okay so that's the reason why we have we have focused on it so in abstract sense every measurement system where you are utilizing a computer to store information is is going to ultimately look like this adc and then a microcontroller therefore you needed to have familiarity with voltages currents adcs dacs microcontrollers some notion of digital discrete etc so all of that has hopefully been built uh, to some extent during the lecture and then partly reinforced during the course of the experiments okay so that's that's what we have ended up doing so far now the interesting questions uh, for today i will i will come to them but uh, the the nature of the questions will be different uh, we will be specifically interested uh, in this measured signal u and uh, more importantly the process of getting the measured signal u okay so i will come come to the questions sooner or later but the focus is not on the electronics now it's on how do you generate a measured signal u and what can you make you have to make sense out of the measured signal u ultimately you are trying to measure something so that you can make sense out of it okay and the and the u is a representation of the measurement okay so we will we will discuss what what i mean by representation but the point is we are discussing the the abstract ideas behind the process of generating u in a given setup is it clear so what we are discussing today is not electronics it's the basic ideas uh, in abstraction which go behind the process of getting to the u okay some of the basic ideas we will we will discuss and the point of this week's or this this series of experiments is for you to explore some of these ideas and reinforce them you know hopefully some more important questions will come through during the course of your experiments okay to to those who are those who are interested but the idea is to uh, help you explore these ideas uh, or the purpose is to explore these ideas and help you connect with these ideas a little better so notions like accuracy precision calibration etc that is the focus of the this week experiments it's not the electronics of course you will use electronics 
but you have working level familiarity with the electronics or, or reasonable number of you have working level familiarity. So we are going to take that as granted, okay. Okay, so before we get into the discussion for today, uh, a couple of points that I need to make. This U of T which you saw is the, which is the analog input. We, were, we have assumed that the analog input comes from a measurement. Okay, so a sensor is providing you an analog input which you then later on process in a certain way. Okay. This U of T is not the measured value. Okay, it's, an, it's a representation of the measured value. That's, that's an important point for you to understand. Okay, so it's, it's typically a voltage but that voltage just by measuring some voltage as being 3.5 volt in your multimeter, it doesn't tell you anything about what you're measuring. Okay. That voltage by itself means nothing. Because suppose I, I put a black box or a screen in front, front of you and I say that this is the output of a sensor. That's U of T. You can do whatever processing with, the, with it later on. You know a lot of electronics. You can do whatever you want with it later on. But I put the screen and I don't tell you why, where it comes from. All you can do is take multimeters and oscilloscopes and, and ammeters, etc., and find out what the value in, in the sense of the uh, units you're, you're usually exposed to, volts, amperes, etc., of the variable that you're measuring is. So you, you can measure U of T, okay, but U of T itself is not the measured value. It's the representation of the measured value. Is that, is that clear to everybody? Okay, it's a, this is an important point. Because most people confuse U of T itself as the measured value. Okay. The second point, uh, of course, I've already said that U of T is not the measured value, and U of T is the, is the representation. Okay. So these two things you need to appreciate before we go on to the questions that we will uh, we will address during the course of this lecture. So any questions at this point? What we mean by a representation of something? U of T is like a proxy. So if you're not attending some class, you send some, tell some fellow, you will act as my proxy, right? That person is not the person who did not come to class. That person represents the person who, who did not come to class, okay? So just by knowing who the proxy is, I have no idea who the person he is representing is, right? You just shout, ah, yes, sir. You don't know anything about who did not did not attend. The same way, U of T is a proxy. U of T is a proxy for the measured value. Right? Okay. Any any questions about about this important idea? Okay. So the questions for today, these questions may seem simple, but they are not very simple. And I can guarantee you, most of you have to have to think before you answer some of these questions, okay. Uh, the three questions we are going to focus, these are the sort of broad questions, there are a lot of sub, sub questions that come up if you start discussing these in detail. And the idea is to get you to think about these questions through the course of a discussion that we will have here, uh, take these ideas back and, and correlate it with what you are going to end up doing uh, during the course of this week. Okay, so the first question is, if U is only a representation, right, then given you, how do we get to the measured value U M? So you are, you are interested in measuring something, displacement, velocity, uh, you are interested in temperature, pressure, lots of different things, okay. Suppose I gave you only U, how do you get to the measured value and I put a screen in front of you, how do you get to the measured value? You, ultimately you are interested in the temperature being read as 83 degrees Fahrenheit, okay or pressure being read as 0.7 bar or velocity being read as some centimeters per second or some displacement as being 30 degrees with respect to reference. Okay, so those are the numbers you are interested in. You are not interested in voltages because that's just a, just a proxy. Okay, so how do you get to the, to these values that you are interested in? Okay, that's, that's one question that we'll discuss in some, some detail. The second question is, even if you knew by some process what the measured value 
and I will call that measured value as um. It's different from u. U is a proxy for um. Even if you knew the measured value um, how do you know that that measured value is equal to the true value? Because ultimately you are interested in the true value of whatever you are measuring. Okay? So, you do not know whether the measured value is the true value. Even if the, so your representation to the measurement may be okay. Okay? But how do you know from the measurement to the true value you are, you are fine? That's another question. The third question is, suppose you are interested in some variable and you have figured out a process of going from u to um and you keep measuring the same quantity or a lot of different people keep measuring the same thing and get the same or similar values. What can you infer about the true value u of t or can you infer anything at all about the true value? Okay. So th these are questions that keep coming up in every measurement scenario. That's why I have sort of picked them off. Okay. So sort of basic questions that keep coming up in every measurement process. Okay. And they are very natural. You don't need to, you don't need to think too much about it. The questions themselves are very natural. The answers sometimes may be obvious, sometimes may not be obvious, but the questions are very natural. So we are going to discuss the questions. Okay. Clear what? Uh, what the questions are. Okay, so, so let's take up the first question. Okay, I'm going to get some people to shoot their mouth off about the first question. So we are discussing the question, if u is only a representation, how do you ever get to the value um, which is probably an intermediary between u and ut which is the true value. Now let's say how do you get to the value ut? Okay, if you are given only u. What do you do? So to the first question. Like no, not all questions. Only the first question. Yeah. So given u, you can measure um by comparing it so by using some other standard value. So like suppose uh, you are having, you are given some u, some voltage for uh, Okay. Voltage representation for some measured value of um, which might be displacement. So mm -hmm. you might be having some other standard uh, standard value of um. Uh, what do you mean you might you be mean? having? Uh, the initial value like, uh, sort of thing. So like for zero displacement, you may assume u uh, to be zero volts. That is how you define it and you go about this. No, so so envision yourself sitting in front of a, a setup, you don't know where the value is coming from and you measure some 3 volt. What are you going to do with this 3 volt? How, how will you tell me that this 3 volt corresponds to some temperature, pressure or whatever, whatever you are measuring? How will you tell me that? Uh, I will measure at some other value, say 5 volts or Okay, volts. I measure 5 volt, now and, what? Uh, I will take the change. and. Uh, I don't think you are understanding my question. I am measuring 3 volt, then I do another measurement, I get 5 volt. How do I say anything about what I am measuring? Some mathematical formula which would relate this to? That's what I wanted to get to. This has nothing to do with mathematics. You can't, just because you measured something at 3 volt, something at 5 volt, you have no idea of what what you are measuring? You understand my question? Roughly. Has this happened to you? That you measure something, I go to the oscilloscope, 3 volt, the meaning? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. So we will go to another guy. Sir, you need to have basically, if you just keep on measuring these values like 3 volt, 5 volt, we point I am trying to make is we need to have some measured value that is we UM, UM bhi pata hona Matlab, we just can't predict uh, like you said you just so what should you have done you are right of course you can't just predict from 3, 5 what what is it that you are trying to measure so what should you have done uh, when I am taking down these 3, 5 and whatever values I must have some mechanism to you know get the values of what we are measuring you know some representative Malab, other values. So you must have a mechanism. So I give you a sheet. 
I give you a sheet saying 3 volt means 30 degrees, 4 volt means 40 degrees, 5 volt means 50 degrees. Yeah. Right? So we Suppose I gave you the sheet, then you just look at the sheet and say, okay, 3 volt means this, 4 volt means this, 5 volt means this. Right? Yeah. So you, you definitely need a sheet. Yes. Okay? That's the first thing for you to realize. The measurement itself has, has no meaning. 3 volt or 4 volt or 0.3 amp or whatever has no meaning. You need a sheet that comes along with it. Who, who generates that sheet? Uh, it could be some standard reference. So, somebody's already performed the experiment. Somebody already means? As in like, uh, you have standards for different. Who will generate the sheet? If you are, you are the person who is measuring. Uh, sir, we, we would take a reference. So reference can be something which we already know. So we need to have some relation between the input and the output. Suppose uh, we have U, which is representing some variable, suppose displacement or temperature. So first of all, we need to assume whether it is a linear relation or quadratic relation or something like that so that we can, suppose I have a relation like U equals to AX plus B. So when no, I no, get... Wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't run here. Okay. U equal to AX plus B. What is X? X is the real variable which we are trying to measure. Suppose it is a displacement. So I am trying to get a relation between, that's what you asked. I am trying to get a relation between what I am observing at the oscilloscope and what is it in the real world. Right. So... No, from how, can the, you just how can you just construct something like why linear, quadratic? Who told you you have to use these relationships? Well, we have to check which kind of relation is going to be most suitable for the given set of observations if we don't have that sheet which you no, are talking I, I about. I think th this is the reason I wanted to have the discussion. I think the main question is not clear to you. Okay. You can check whether a certain relationship, whatever you may construct the relationship structure to be, as being true or false or valid or invalid, only if you know what is it that you are measuring. If I gave you a sheet, then you can try and fit AX plus B and a x square plus b x plus c or whatever it is to that and say that the relationship between what you are measuring and what you are observing has this bearing. If I gave you that sheet, I am asking where did you get that sheet from? Where do you think that sheet comes from? It's you need to have done something else. You started off well but you went off somewhere else. Uh, I think there should be another way of measuring it also. I mean some physical way of measuring it so we know how, I mean what By the way the answer is not complicated. Okay, you just need to think like a layman. And there has to be a scale relating uh, U with UM. Okay. Something else must have happened before. I just want someone to just hit the nail on his head, be done with it. Uh, one, more, one more try there. We Any thoughts a, on this? We could have a standard reference or something. Uh, we could take some some reference value like and assign say uh, if u is equal to 0 then u m will be 0 and then No, who tells you all this? You, can you arbitrarily assume something like this? We need to begin somewhere so that is how we could uh, What do you mean you need to begin somewhere? So you are measuring we, 0? We need to get the relative idea about uh, uh, the measure, measured values of u so Okay Ask some, somebody here the answer is quite simple. I'm, I'm surprised nobody has come up uh, with it. If that is the first instrument which is measuring that physical quantity, then there is no need to do anything further. But if there was a previous instrument uh, which measured that quantity, then you just need to compare the uh, values measured by both of them and calibrate uh, the new device. Right. So, okay. So, uh, that's, that's probably the, a nice answer. What you need to do is that, now don't, everybody is going to be like, ah, What's the big deal about this? The fact that you didn't know it, okay, or you could not articulate it properly. The, the point is that you need to know the value you expect for a certain measurement that you want to make. Okay, so for example, suppose I, I want to get a value corresponding to, I'm, suppose I'm measuring mass. Okay, it translates to measuring weight. If I know that the value that I measure for me to know that the value that I measure, the U, corresponds to 100 gram weight, I should know that a 100 gram weight, a priori, I should know before I perform the experiment, that a 100 gram weight produced this, 200 gram weight produced something else, 
Therefore, if I have a value between U1 and U2, which is between the 100 and 200 grams, okay, and I assume the measurement process to be whatever you said, some relationship, linear, quadratic, blah, 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 those sort of relationships, then I will be able to make something, then I will be able to make a statement on what I am measuring. Do you understand what I am saying? Okay. Just by looking at some voltage value, you are not going to be able to say anything about the stuff you are measuring unless you are given a sheet, which we spoke about, that this voltage corresponds to this, this voltage corresponds to this. Where do you get that sheet from? Somebody should have used the same measurement process and should have known what the output of the measurement process needs to be for you to be able to make that sheet. Okay? This, where is the sheet going to come from? The person who is measuring it should know a priori where the sheet came from. So, this, this is an important point. Most people don't understand. How many of you have not understood this point so far? Okay, so many people have not understood it. Okay, so suppose I am measuring displacement. Okay, I am measuring some angle and I have a a measurement process which gives me U of T at the end of it. Okay, and I measure 1 volt. Now I have to say how much I have rotated with respect to some reference. That's what I have to say. What I am, what I am saying is that just by looking at 1 volt you are going to get nowhere. You have to accompany it with a sheet saying 1 volt means that you have rotated by 30 degrees. 2 volt means you have rotated by 45 degrees. Okay. Who is going to prepare that sheet for you? That is the question that, that, that we are trying to answer. That sheet, just by virtue of you not thinking about what is happening, may just present itself as a data sheet in, on your computer. But we are, not, we are not talking about that. We are talking about the process of getting to the sheet. So the process of getting to the sheet is that you need to know that I am moving by 30 degrees first and then see what your output U of T is. You need to know that I am moving by 45 degrees first. Then see your output, what, what your output is. Put all this in a sheet and give it to the person who is actually doing the measurement. Okay? So you are basically, you have, you have measured a priori and the actual act of measurement is just correlating what you measure versus what comes on the sheet. What is given to you in the sheet. Okay? Now, without this process having a priori, you can't make any sense of what you're measuring. Okay. So now the question is, how do you know that you rotated by 30 degrees in the first place? When you're doing this process of arriving at the sheet, you rotated by 30 degrees and measured 1 volt. Rotated something else by 45 degrees, measured something else. How do you know you actually rotated by 30 degrees? Okay. So that's, that's where something that everybody agrees on comes into place. Okay, let's say I'm measuring displacements. Something that everybody is agreed on as what it means to write the symbol 1 meter has already been agreed on by the people. By human beings have agreed upon what constitutes 1 meter and therefore subdivisions of it. Okay. Based on that agreement, you are saying that I am moving this by 2 mm and I am going to measure what I am moving by. Okay, so if I get 1 volt, then I am going to measure by, uh, move by 4 mm and so I get something else. So how much you have moved by or what exactly happened during the process, during this process of generating of the sheet depends on an agreed consensus between you and other human beings. Okay, there is no basis for that agreement. You just agree that this means that I will put a symbol 1 mm. That's the agreement. Is it clear? Okay, so fairly insightful answer. He said if this measurement of this variable or this quantity did not exist in the parlance of human beings, then there is no point doing this exercise. Whatever you measure, you that is it. Now you can agree that these sort of measurements measured in this way, these sort of numbers mean something else. So that agreement has to be reached 
reached first. Okay? Is this clear? You have to give an input for which input as an input to the measurement process. The process of measurement gives you a value. Okay? You have to input to the measurement process which is the sensor, the way of measurement, how you are measuring it, whether you are giving it to an ADC, blah, 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 the entire measurement process. An input for which you already know the output. Okay? And then correlate the known output, which is the measured value, to you, the voltage you are measuring. Is it clear? Okay, so that process is called calibration. So what you do in calibration, is that you construct a table. You give an input, so known value of measured variable. So this is then U of T. You populate this table. Okay. Tiny. So this this table, or the process of arriving at this table, is called calibration. Okay. It's a fairly straightforward idea. If you think about it, but not so straightforward to explain all the questions that go with it. Okay, any questions about what calibration is? Without calibration, there is no point to measurement. That's, that's what you need to understand. Right? You know, people go through entire engineering programs. They look at some, some number, some, some measurement is happening somewhere, strain measure or there is a number on a screen. They will note down that number. What does, what does that number mean is never so, something that you pay attention to. Okay? If you do not pay attention to it, there is no point of the measurement. Okay? How many of you have already done this? You must have done this in your, in your IIT days here. Gone to some lab, taken some numbers down. You number note down. How many of you have done this and not, not ever questioned or not ever felt the need to question it? One, because of laziness, two, because of not in, no interest. Third, even if you were interested, did not even strike you that somebody else must have done this before. A, B, C. How many of you choose A? No interest. No. B is laziness. Okay. C. Ah, this, this, uh, Good, the honest people. Hmm? Okay, so you keep measuring lots of different things, noting down lots of things. Hmm? So from now on, if there is any prof who tells you, okay, you go do this experiment, note down these these values. These are the values for pressure. If this, so you should. What the question you should ask is, show me the calibration sheet. When was this calibrated? How was it calibrated? you will realize that it wasn't calibrated at all. Then you tell him, I won't do the experiment. Unless you cal give me the calibration sheet, I won't do it. Okay, so try this. Go and tell your prof. Okay? The point is that you need to understand there is no point in doing a measurement unless there is calibration. So, what you will end up doing tomorrow is you will learn how to calibrate a load cell you will also know, learn how to calibrate a pressure measurement device that we, we have just concocted. Very simple to put together. So I will show both of those things to you. So you will calibrate a load cell. You know, load cell is, you go to these electronic weighing scales, you must have seen in grocery shops. The guy puts something and some number comes there. Kilogram, gram. Right? How do you know it is right? I can display anything I want. Right? Somebody must have said that this weighing scale, if it shows these numbers, it means that it is measuring this many grams. 
Somebody must have said this. Otherwise, that guy is just cheating. You don't need to even measure. You can just keep displaying something. Right? So the person or the body that does it has sanction from set of human beings, so the government, saying that you are allowed to tell whether this instrument with this measurement process, if it yields these values, then it, you can certify that the number you are measuring is grams. Okay? Somebody has already done that, otherwise it makes no sense. So when we are calibrating these uh, devices, so in that case what shall we be using to calibrate them? Okay. So the question, so this is, this is an important question and ultimately it boils, boils down to what I briefly mentioned but we, I did not elaborate. When you use something to calibrate an instrument, that instrument or whatever you are using for calibration needs to be at least better than what, what is it that you are trying to calibrate. Is that clear to you? Like I said, if I need to know, if I say that I moved 30 degrees and the voltage value was 1 volt, I need to know that I actually moved 30 degrees and not 32 degrees. Okay? Is there, otherwise my table will be all wrong. So how do I know I moved by 30 degrees? So the, there has to be a measurement there. Okay? So the instrument that is used for calibrating another instrument needs to be at least as good, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. In fact, it has to be one order of magnitude better, typically, as a ballpark. So, uh, what about calibrating that instrument? Where, how do you know that that is right? So, you can keep answer, asking this question and you know, you have an infinite series going there. What is the answer to that? Okay, so the, the short answer to that is at some point, because you people you have to realize that there is no end to this at some point you will have to agree people have to agree on something arbitrarily with no basis okay and give a symbol saying that this measurement implies this symbol it's an arbitrary spec specification given by human beings you may not all be party to making that decision but in some sense people have agreed that these people will decide sort of thing. Okay? So the answer to this question is an important question. Is that how do you know or what happens to the instrument that you are using to calibrate? At, at the end you have to agree on something. If you do not agree then you can keep going, going on and on. It doesn't make any sense also. Because the numbers that you are coming up with 30 degrees, uh, 0.7 bar, etc. Those things have to be agreed upon by people before you start using those. Is that, is that clear? It's an important question. Any other questions? Okay, so we're going to move, I'll, I'll come to what exactly you're going to do in your experiment uh, in this time around. Okay, but the idea of this discussion is to throw open these questions and get you to start thinking about them. Okay. At the least, whenever you see a number next time on some screen and somebody asks you to take it down and say, okay, this is the value of whatever you are measuring, at the least, you should know that this is bogus. Okay? If you, if you have not been told what the calibration sheet is, it is bogus. That whole measurement is bogus. Okay? That's at the least is what you should go back with. But if you know more, then you can uh, make use of what is a, whatever is it. Sure, ask, ask, ask us for it. <laughs> and you will know whether we are doing bogus, bogus giri or not. Okay. So that's, uh, that's about calibration. So the next, uh, next question that I had thrown up is, uh, now suppose you have calibrated something. Okay. So during the process of calibration, what you are doing is, let me just come to this calibration process again. You are creating a table between u of t and u. Is it clear? What, what table you are creating? It's a map between u of t and u. 
okay so this u of t comes from some assumed value of u of t which you think is correct the so called true value now whether that is correct or not depends on the calibration of that itself so that process itself okay so this is the process of calibration establishing this map so the question we are asking is this u unfortunately is not a representation of u of t it is a representation of u of m which is the measured value of whatever you are trying to measure okay is it clear u of t and u establishing that map is calibration but given a u you only know something about u of m which is the measured value which may be different from u of t okay so let me just highlight that so let's say let's say we are measuring temperature this is just an example so suppose i have some numbers like this okay so some volts some degrees celsius suppose my calibration table came out to be this i stuck my sensor into a, into a chamber which i knew a priori was at 30 degrees and that sensor put out a voltage value u which is 1 volt i do the same thing when it was at 40 and when it was at 50 i get 1.5 volt and 2 volt okay so now i have established a map between u of t and u which is the true value and u now this process is done so i don't have chambers anymore i'm just going to believe the measured value or the the u and say something about the true value that is the actual process of measurement is it clear so this this table is given to you so the question is this u is a representation of the measured value not u of t so there is an abstract variable u of m so how do you know that what you are measuring that is u uh, the representation of the measured value u of m which is u and this table how do you know that this table is valid so for example when the calibration was happening if there was an error between u of t and u of m the error is going to carry all the way through you are going to be given a sheet everybody is going to keep making the same error all the time do you understand that do you understand the issue that that is uh, that we are discussing so if you want to believe a sheet a calibration sheet that is given to you then it has to be or it, be, it better be for for you to make sense out of u it better be that u of t is as close as possible to um that is the measured value is as close as possible to the true value okay and the difference between this is usually called inaccuracy or also use the word accuracy is the difference between u of t and u of m Okay, this is a fundamental notion in measurement. We'll discuss this in greater detail. It's not 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 an easy notion to to understand. It's fine fine to define it like this, but if I ask somebody to speak about it for two minutes, you'll all be stuttering. I know that. Okay, because inherent to this is the notion of a true value. What is a true value? I mean, you can ask a philosophical question. But the point is that if your true value deviates from your measured value by a significant amount okay then and you are using that for calibration that process for calibration then the calibration table will have less and less meaning you will have less and less confidence in you saying that okay 1.25 means 35 degrees that statement you want to make ultimately okay is this clear the the issue is the issue clear okay so it's good if u of t is as close as possible to um yeah so we will assume that the the calibrating device is true okay that's a basic assumption it may not be yeah it may not be true but we are in the process of calibration we always assume the u of t that you are giving 
is the right value. Now, if that is incorrect, its calibration is error is also going to get added up. Is that clear to everybody? So this this table u of t you will assume as being true. Only this is variable. So the notion of accuracy, okay, this it's not always called inaccuracy, but it's called accuracy. Is all also this this difference difference between the true value and the measured value. Okay, now you want that to be small. Now when can what is a typical sort of situation where where you have what is a typical situation where you have bad accuracy? Give me an example of a situation where you have bad accuracy. Okay, so anyway, we'll, we'll come to that in a little while. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of a situation. So you've all seen a dart board. Dart board. Darts. Even if you have not used darts, you must have crumpled pieces of paper, tried to hit some target at some point. So, so the dart board in which you throw darts and this is your target. Okay. So I am going to throw, draw three pictures. This is your target. I throw five darts. Each dart hitting, I'm going to use an into mark. discuss the difference between situation A and situation B. What is the difference? What is the difference between situation A and situation B? Both are accurate. Both are precise, but one is accurate. Okay, so the point is that this collection of darts okay, seems to indicate that your process of throwing darts is fairly repeatable. You keep doing the same thing, but you do the wrong thing. Okay? What will, why, why will you do this? Suppose you had a squint or you can't see the target properly. You are thinking that I am hitting the target all the time. Or sometimes you know that you are not hitting the target, but you will keep doing the same thing. Okay? This is that situation. This is a situation where you hit the target and you are pretty repeatable. So this is a good shooter. Okay? This is a situation where you are a bad shooter. You, you are all over the place. So C is bad, of course. A is good, of course. B, it seems that you have some hope. You just need to either wear specs or you need to change the angle in which you are throwing and keep repeating that. Okay? So, I am going to give some names to this. So, in this case, UT is my desired location. Okay? And the difference between, I can talk about a Euclidean distance between my target and what I actually achieve as the inaccuracy. Okay, and I can I can come up with a uh, I can come up with a, with a sum of square sort of Euclidean distance, which represents the inaccuracy of all the five throws. Okay, take the Euclidean distance, add all of them up. For this, you will have the smallest number. For this, you will have a larger number. And for this maybe you have a larger number or maybe you have a smaller number. The point is, if the inaccuracy is small, then you call the measurement accurate, obviously. 
So, this is accurate, not accurate, again not accurate. So, we are going to introduce another notion called precision. The precision captures this notion B that you are not talking about the true value at all. You are talking about the difference between two measurements. So, UM1 and UM2. Okay. Accuracy talks about difference between the true value and the measured value. Precision talks about UM1 and UM2. It has nothing to do with the true value. Okay. So, you call imprecision. Okay. So, this is precise. This is also precise. Okay. In some sense. This is not precise. So, two things you need to remember. Precision has nothing to do with accuracy in the sense of a measurement process. Okay. Accuracy has nothing to do with precision either. Hmm? What about the second statement? Is that true? How many of you say accuracy has nothing to do with precision? If I am precise, I may or may not be accurate. But if I am accurate, I am precise. Okay, so let for those of you who are confused, I will confuse you even more. Okay, so I am going to give you this. This is one situation. Second situation is all of them are here. Which is more accurate, which is more precise? Yeah. So, it, it depends on the relative distance of these dots away from the crosses, of course. But the point is, you can be accurate and not precise. That is, if you keep repeating the same thing, you will approximately get to the right value, but you will, you may be off in a different direction. So you throw something and you kind of over correct and you throw something else, kind of over correct again, you throw something else. So, you are reasonably accurate, but not precise. But you can keep throwing the same place, then you are precise. So, these two are independent notions. Accuracy is not related to precision, precision is not related to accuracy. Okay? Yeah, so we will we'll discuss about the infinite infinities soon. <clears throat> okay, so tomorrow you are going to do something and hopefully this accuracy, precision, etc. will, will come into play. You have to, you have to think about it. So, this is a load cell. Okay. So, this this guy is similar to what the grocer uses. This is similar to what the grocer uses. You put a weight there. Then you connect up your electronics in a certain way. So you will be told about the Wheatstone's bridge, etc. Which you may have been exposed to already. You must have definitely done problems. Pre-JE on Wheatstone's bridge. R1 by R2 equal to R3 by R4 all that okay so this is this is what you will use for calibrating this load cell you will keep putting different weights weights will be given to you you can ask the question where do you get these weights from i will say go and blame the standards organization indian standards organization okay so these weights will be given you need to put them here measure the value of u and create the calibration table you will assume these to be the UT. Who told you that these are UT? Good question. No answer. Okay. Indian Standards Organization. We will we'll tell you that. So, that is for this load cell. Okay. So, you will do a more interesting experiment. So, you will be exposed to this device. Okay. So, this is a very simple device. On this device, so it is just a piece of metal, okay, which is open to the atmosphere right now, but if I close this, whatever pressure is maintained inside is maintained. Okay. So, this, this device is going to be used for measurement of pressure. Okay. Let us say. This device is going to be used for measurement of pressure. 
obviously i can make this guy stand at different points in time at different different heights okay so if i take this off it drops hmm the physics of this should be fairly straightforward for you to for you to understand so i'm going to ask somebody who has done lots of physics let's see if you can apply it to this simple situation tell me the physics of this why does this why are you able to see something here i am able to stop this at different different yeah. heights so uh, i mean whenever you put a weight on it uh, there will be that rod right so that rod will stop the vertical thingy falling through why because there's a hole all the way through and you're putting it putting a pin through it no you're not as asking answering my question i am able to make this guy stop at different different heights for example i made him stop here i made a stop oh, here oh the pin doesn't go all the way through yeah oh, then it's just friction friction then it's just friction i mean you just how many how many of you say it's friction or there might be holes inside that thing where you're putting the there, pin there is no there might be and all i don't know what's inside so i can speculate zero milega to anybody else who's going to venture to talk about physics of the simple device by the way it's not friction ha huh? ye dekho वापस आ रहा है एनीबडी एल्स विलिंग टू वेंचर इन टू एक्सप्लेनिंग द फिजिक्स ऑफ दिस ओके टेल मी दिस सो लुक एट दिस कंडीशन इन व्हिच दिस हैज रेस्टेड समवेयर ओके सो दिस दिस गाय इज इज जस्ट अ रॉड ऑन वन साइड इट सीज सम प्रेशर ऑन द अदर साइड इट सीज सम अदर प्रेशर व्हाट कैन यू टेल मी द प्रेशर इनसाइड वीजावी द प्रेशर आउटसाइड yeah so the, that itself is a physics the pressure inside has to be higher than the pressure outside because if you do, do a simple force balance of this guy okay on this side you have pressure acting through this area and then the weight and that is contracted by the pressure here so that's the physics sorry i took a fa to okay so as simple as that so what you are going to do now is you are going to use this as a pressure measurement device and the way you are going to use that is you utilize weights to first calibrate this device okay so what do you mean by that so this is connected to this piece of electronics tiny piece of electronics which is going to generate some voltages here okay and these voltages will be different for different weights put in here Okay, so again, you establish a calibration table, and then say, if I measure this voltage, I can correlate with with the pressure that must ha must be inside this, because if I believe my force balance, the pressure should be that. Yeah. So you will only get P into A. You're right. You're right. Okay. So good, good question. But if I gave you the area of the piston, then you will be able to get to the pressure. <clears throat> okay. So this is a, going to be a pressure measurement device for you. this will give you load this is some weight weight measurement measurement device uh we'll come to that in the next next time around but you will be doing calibration of two instruments for sure one is this guy and the other is your load cell okay so you have to create the table okay so this each each group will be doing this each of you will create this table okay and we are going to ask you to measure some unknown quantity so called unknown quantity from here which is not used in the calibration table so each group is going to measure something okay and we are going to use that data so the data of each of the groups to make some statements about precision okay you have lots of um1 um2 um3 etc we are going to utilize that information to find out if our measurement process which hopefully everybody will replicate but the point is that people will not replicate it people will keep doing their own thing 
you will all get different um1 um2 um3 um4 values if you do not get different um1 um2 um3 um4 values you are all lying together okay so they will make a statement about precision of the entire measurement process how you keep this how that thing is plugged in is there a hole here is there a hole there whether whether this is repeatable etc the entire process leads to your precision or imprecision so we will we will make a statement about precision okay so each i think each lab has 40 50 people right or 20 30 people so we will make a statement about precision from the data of each each person all collected together okay now the purpose of that exercise is not to say whether this is precise or not that is not the purpose the purpose is to indicate to you that this question should come at every point in time when you are using using a measuring equipment because the, what is its accuracy what is its precision whether it has been calibrated or not etc these are basic questions that you need to ask before utilizing a measurement for the purposes of verifying some hypothesis okay so the the process of asking those questions or why those questions make sense is what we are trying to highlight it's not a specific answer of whether this is precise or not that's immaterial because you are probably never going to use this instrument to measure pressure is that clear what you are going to end up doing okay any questions about uh, about what we are overall trying the, the overall intent of the of the discussion is to let you explore notions of precision accuracy okay and the get exposed to the idea of calibration and do calibration a couple of times okay there are lots of questions that one can ask related to this simple experiment okay uh, we will ask some of them to you during your uh, during your ex experiments itself and some in your exam of course so if you don't understand what you're doing from a uh, from a conceptual understanding point of view you will you will be under a handicap okay so pay attention to what is it that you are doing because the questions are not very easy about this they are confusing questions they are not if you are not clear about what you are doing you can get easily confused okay any any overall questions on what the learning objective is learning objective is to get exposed to ideas of accuracy precision calibration this is these are excuses for you to get exposed to that ideas yeah if accuracy is zero or inaccuracy is zero then you can say precision is zero or imprecision is zero that is correct nowhere else you can say anything inaccuracy is zero yes okay so you keep measuring and you keep hitting the right target all the time then obviously precision is imprecision is also zero so but you said that uh, they don't have any relation sure accuracy in this, in this particular so you can in the asim or in the extreme cases there are relationships okay but in general if, for example if inaccuracy is some number i'm just giving you a number for some measurement device is 0.1 mm right right no the question he was asking is 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 there a condition where you can say something about precision by knowing only accuracy and my answer is yes you can if the accuracy is zero or inaccuracy is zero so what do you mean by accuracy and inaccuracy so the definition for inaccuracy is this ut minus um yeah this is inaccuracy but it is also used uh somewhat incorrectly as the term accuracy itself okay that's why i put it in brackets so when you see accuracy is so much it actually means inaccuracy so if the inaccuracy is zero which means that every time you measure you hit the true value then and the true value remains constant then the precision is also zero or imprecision is zero okay see if you understand the spirit of what i'm saying the spirit of what i'm saying is that just because you knew inaccuracy you cannot say anything about imprecision 
but yes in one particular case if inaccuracy is zero then you can also say imprecision is zero that doesn't mean that the spirit of the previous statement is wrong okay so if, if you're trying to do a one-upmanship saying ah, I found something where you are wrong sure great but if you want to understand the spirit of the argument Any other questions? Okay, so happy labbing. <laughs>